So a while back I made a video about four key mistakes that a lot of low-level players make in Smash Ultimate. And I still believe that the majority of those mistakes are still happening a lot. And if you want to see up on those mistakes, they're going to be the top of the screen right now in a card. But today I want to talk to you guys about middle-level players, which I think the majority of people are at this point. People have had a lot of time getting into the game, kind of figuring out what they want to do, deciding if they want to get good or if they don't. And today I want to talk about how you can get a little bit better and how you can avoid some really big mistakes that I'm seeing quite often now that people are becoming a bit better at the game. With that all said though, guys, Let's get started. But the first mistake that I see a lot of people doing is unnecessary movement, or essentially just running around and using a ton of movement for no exact reason. Now, of course, when you look at the top players, especially in you know the recent Genesis matches, they're running around a lot. But when you also look at them, they have good reason to move. They have good reasons for essentially everything they're doing. When you see a Genesis player playing, they're going in, they're going out, they're baiting, they're trying to get the exact right timing to get on their opponent's shield, they really do have reasons for every single one of their movements. But a thing that I see with a lot of lower or middle level players is that you're running around without a real purpose to why you're running around. Because, I don't know, it feels like when you're just running all over the place, dash dancing, you're playing really well, while in a lot of situations, that can actually be hurting you. The one thing you want to remember about dash dancing and running all this is that when you start a dash, it actually makes sure that you can't do a few actions. You can't shield for a little bit, you can't even really attack for a little bit, all you can do is you know use a dash attack, and as well, jumping becomes quite a bit less safe to do. So, what does that mean for you as a player? Well, it means that if you just keep dash dancing all over the place all the time, your opponent can actually just straight up hit you out of it. And if you don't have a real reason why you're moving around like this, and if you aren't really going for anything specifically, if you're just running around because you want to, that obviously is just going to limit options and make sure so that you aren't playing better. A lot of the times I know it makes you feel like you're playing better, it makes you feel like you're just doing so much stuff because you have all this movement down, but remember, why you're moving matters a lot more than how much you're moving. Now, in addition to this, I wanted to mention that a lot of times, more precise movements can actually be more important. Now, of course, for the majority of the time, you see people running around, dashing around, using really fast jumps and fast falls, but as well, you also see a decent amount of people walking, and a decent amount of people walking and shielding, and even some people rolling at times, so moves that are a little bit slower than just plain up running. And initially you'd say, hey, you know, that's probably not the best idea in the world. I could be having more success, more speed, put that all together to work out better. But sometimes slowing it down, making sure you have the exact right spacing, making sure that you are 100% ready for your opponent pretty much at any time, that you're pushing up slowly, that you're getting that space, getting them near the ledge while not really applying way too much, you know, pressure on yourself, I guess, by forcing yourself to dash, that can be in a lot of ways more important. And when you look at top players, you see that a lot. You see a lot of micro spacing, you see a lot of people walking, getting the exact distance that they need. And yes, you do have to kind of decide for yourself, do I wanna walk, do I wanna run, do I wanna jump, what I wanna do, that is gonna just come with time. But I feel like the thing you have to keep in mind right here is that you shouldn't just be moving because you can, and you should really have a thought in mind every time you move, either to try to start up a combo, to try to just get in, to try to defensively space, to try to push your opponent near the ledge, or maybe to give them some space so that you can get a bit of time to get some resources, like let's say a Pikmin for Olimar. Overall again, think about why you're moving, and if you do, you're gonna be playing a lot better. So the next thing you're gonna cover is something that is, I guess, Pretty specific, but I really wanted to go over this as I feel like it's a big mistake that a lot of people make and a lot of people were asking me to be a little bit more specific in my last video, so hopefully this one can click for a lot of you. Now this is that I feel like a lot of people go on the offense in a very unsafe way. And a lot of people don't really realize that they're doing this. In a lot of cases when you're going offensively, you just jump towards your opponent, you press an attack, and you see if it hits or it doesn't. And that's in a lot of ways what people do. Now sometimes people wait and bait out these attacks, sometimes they don't. That's another way that a lot of people go for. But one thing I want to say right here that you should start trying to do if you want to get better offense is honestly trying to land in different ways, trying to cross up your opponent, and as well going for tomahawk grabs. Essentially just jumping and then landing and then going for a grab. Now I feel like this is really the big trifecta of things that you should try to focus on, as in a lot of cases people just don't really do this that much. In a lot of cases, as I just said, people just go in, they attack, they repeat that same attack over and over and over again, and it leads to some big problems. Now, the thing is, if you are landing offensively sometimes right in front of your opponent, and sometimes really far away from your opponent with defensive spacing, if you are sometimes crossing up your opponent's shield, while sometimes specifically not crossing up your opponent's shield, so they don't really know where you're gonna be when you land, as well, if you are specifically using quite a bit of your time actually just jumping towards your opponent and not attacking and just conditioning them into thinking that you're gonna attack, and then you know they throw out an option, you dodge it, and then you can attack them, or by going in for a tomahawk grab in that situation, you are making it a lot harder on your opponent to know what you're going to be doing, and a lot harder to essentially just punish you for going aggressive. 
Now, the thing is, if you keep doing the same offensive option every single time, especially against someone like Olimar, they can just choose the same defensive option that works against your offensive option. Let's say that you're playing Wolf and you see an Olimar and you go in with a forward air, which isn't even the best move to go in a lot of the times with, but let's say you're doing that and you just keep jumping, landing, forward air, landing, forward air, landing, forward air, and every single time, the Olimar player just goes for an up smash, and every single time, they beat you, and you just keep doing that, and you're making the job for the Olimar player very easy. I mean, they're essentially just doing the same thing again and again, and they're beating you without really any thought. Well, on the other hand, if you happen to sometimes jump towards him and then actually back up a little bit, don't throw that forward air. He throws that up smash because he's kind of used to it, and then you jump in, use a dash attack, use a grab, use a jab, use whatever you want to, or even jump again and go for forward air after that when he's not quite ready for it. That can catch a lot of people off guard, that can get a lot of damage out, and that can really open up your offense against people that are just, you know, choosing one option that seems to beat you every single time you try to beat it. Now, with this in mind, you are going to have to learn how to space offensively against your opponent as well. I know a lot of people when going on the offense just kind of hold towards their opponent, try to land really close to their opponent, and just get as close as they possibly can. And that can be okay in some situations, but again, when you look at a lot of top players, especially a player like Zachary playing Wolf, a lot of the times he'd actually space his nair to be just at the tip of the opponent's shield. If it hit, he could go in. If it missed, he could hold back and then be safe. Learning how to space your different attacks, learning how to know, you know, if you're going to be close enough to cross up your opponent's shield or not, that's some stuff that, of course, you're going to have to put time into the lab with. But practicing and spacing and making sure that you're using a lot of your offensive options safely, that can make you do a lot better. And as well, it can make so that your opponent just can't easily punish you every single time you go for an offensive option. Overall, these two things I think are very important for offense. And a lot of people are kind of failing at these, so I feel like these are things that you should mainly focus on. Now, the third thing I wanted to talk about is one that actually I think makes sense to a lot of people to do, but you really shouldn't do that. And that is using the same exact strategy in neutral every single time, and specifically using the same optimal strategy in neutral every single time. Now, if I'm gonna be going into this, I feel like a lot of people kind of realize at a certain point that their characters have certain things that are really good and certain things that they can keep using over and over again and seem to be having pretty decent results. Whenever they talk about the character, everyone says, hey, this is probably the best thing you should be doing. So, of course, you're gonna be doing that. That just kind of makes sense. But the problem comes when you do this over and over again, your opponent is going to be developing counterplay, and that's going to be hurting your character and hurting you as a player a lot. Now, for some really, really specific examples, we could be talking about Pichu. A lot of the times I hear is Pichu, because I've been playing him a lot, uh, that I should just be full hop jumping, throwing out a Thunder Jolt, and then going in with that Thunder Jolt. Probably into either, you know, a dash attack, or an up tilt, or most likely, into a grab. So, let's say I get into a match, and every single time we get into neutral, I jump and I go for a Thunder Jolt. Every single time. Sure, the first few times that might work out okay, I can go in with that Thunder Jolt, it'll be great, but if my opponent gets used to me doing this, they can simply put, just jump over that Thunder Jolt when it gets to them, know that I'm probably going to be going for a grab or, you know, an up tilt or something, jump over that, and then maybe hit me with a back air or a down air, or really just punish me any way they want to. If I just keep using the same strategy, essentially every single time I get the opportunity again, that will get punished, and people will figure out how to play around that. And that's one thing that I feel like a lot of people, you know, realize, but they don't really implement into their play. If you are doing the same optimal strategy and it's not working, then change up your strategy. I know a lot of people playing somebody like, let's say Ike, are playing him, they're using Nair a lot, they're essentially approaching, going away with Nair, all of that. But when you see a character, you know, being played by someone like MKLeo, he's not always going for Nair. Sure, he is using it in a lot of situations, that is probably his most optimal strategy to use, but he mixes it up with stuff like forward tilts, up tilts, sometimes even forward airs, and a lot of times with grabs, and it kind of works for him as you see. His opponent doesn't know exactly what he's going to be doing all the time, and while he's sure, still maybe probably using the main optimal strategy most of the time, definitely not all the time. Definitely still keeping his opponent on his toes. So yeah, make sure to do that. Don't become way too predictable, because an optimal strategy can eventually become a bad strategy if your opponent knows exactly how to counter it, which will happen a lot if you just keep trying to use it every time it's applicable. The fourth thing I want to talk about is one that I've heard from a lot of top players that I agree with that is crucially important to do, um, that will make you do a lot better in your games, that will make you just have a lot more potential in the long run, make you enjoy the game a lot more, pretty much give you every single good thing you want. And it's really simple as well, and that is, simply put, playing a character that you think can do really well, or playing a character that you think is actually good. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean playing a character that is top tier, or that everyone else thinks is good, or that, you know, everyone else thinks has a lot of potential, but specifically playing a character that you personally believe has a lot of potential, that you personally believe could do really well with, and that you personally believe you could actually win with, and that you don't just lose every single game because you're picking this person up. I feel like this is very, very important. 
And it matters because you'll only do as well with the character as you think you're gonna do. Let's say that you have one person that's playing Dr. Mario and they really like Dr. Mario. Let's say there's even two. They both really like Dr. Mario. But this player thinks, hey, I see a lot of potential. I see a lot of throw combos. I see a lot of potential damage. I see down B killing really early. There's so much stuff going on here. Well, on the other hand, you have a Dr. Mario that's saying, hey, you know, he's all right, um, but his throw combos aren't as good as Mario. And of course, someone like Luigi probably has better things in that category. And you know, I think maybe I should be playing Inkling because he probably has more damage output and is probably just way better. So I don't really even know why I'm playing Doc, but you know, he's okay, I guess. Being the person that actually enjoys the character and especially being the person that thinks the character has potential is going to, in the long run, do better with them. <laughs> even when we look at Genesis, there was a top 64 Dr. Mario in this example that has actually happened. Um, while well, people aren't even thinking that he's that great of a character, and I think that can really prove. If you believe your character's great and if you play as that character and are doing your best with them, no matter who we really pick, um, you can do great with them, but you have to make sure you're picking up somebody that you believe is good, personally. Again, it doesn't matter if your friend thinks he's good or if the best player thinks he's good, but you think that they're good or you think that there's potential because you're going to be able to pull that out of that character. You're going to be able to show the world what that character can do, no matter if they're a top tier or bottom tier or whatever. Just make sure you're picking up someone that you personally believe is good, that you think you can do good with. And if you do all that and if you just put a lot of time and effort into whoever you pick, you're going to eventually really feel a lot of the benefit from that and enjoy the character in the long run. Overall, let's just say you're a person that likes Bowser, you're doing well with Bowser, and you think Bowser's good, yep, pick him up, play him. Sure, he might not be the best, but you see that potential, you wanna play him. Let's say that you're a person that wants to play Olimar, sees that he's a top tier, really think that he has some great stuff going for him and that you wanna play him, and again, pick him up, play him, enjoy him. I feel like this is one of the most important things, just make sure you aren't playing a character that you personally don't believe in, because if you are, eventually you're probably either going to swap characters, or on the other hand, get bored of the game because you don't feel like you can get any better, or on the other hand, just complain about your character all the time and no one really wants to hear that and that's going to make the game a lot more frustrating for you. So please keep this in mind, I feel like this is one of those big important things. Um, and I guess the game's been up for a while now, so you might have already done this, but I feel like a lot of people kind of haven't and this is really important, so they guys go with that. And they guys go for key mistakes that I see a lot of middle level players doing right now in Smash Ultimate. Now, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and maybe comment down below what are some personal mistakes you've been seeing a lot in yourself or in people that are playing really bad. And they guys go for key mistakes that I'm seeing a lot of middle level players do. And there you guys go, four key mistakes that I'm seeing a lot of middle level players doing in Smash Ultimate. Now, as always, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and comment down below what are some big mistakes that you personally have been seeing from either yourself or from other players near your skill level that you think people could maybe work on, and that'd be cool if you guys shared that. As well, if you want to see another video like this, top of the screen right now is a card to a playlist of more Smash Ultimate discussion videos like this, and specifically a four key mistakes for low level players that might be helping you out if you just want to get better from the get-go, or just feel like you have some other mistakes you might want to be helping yourself out with. As always, guys, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more videos like this, as always, hit subscribe or that notification button. And maybe comment down below what type of video that you'd like to see in the future that's similar to this or another tip video that you think would be really helpful for you guys. As always, guys, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed and have a smashing day.